Hello, good morning and welcome to the science class. My name is Miss Sena Do. Today we are going to talk about the circulatory system in humans. Let's look at the main objectives of this course. One, we are going to explain the concept of the circulatory system. Two, we are going to outline the functions of the parts of the circulatory system. Three, we are going to describe the composition and functions of blood. And finally, four, we are going to explain how high and low blood pressure develops in the circulatory system. So let's start with the basic definition of the circulatory system. I know you know so much about the circulatory system. So let's start with its definition. The circulatory system is an organ system responsible for transporting materials throughout the entire body. The circulatory system supplies tissues in the body with oxygen and other nutrients, transports hormones, and removes unnecessary waste products. The circulatory system is also called the transport system. Looking at the components of the circulatory system, we'll say that the circulatory system in humans consists of the following structural elements. These are, one, we have blood, two, we have the heart, and three, we have blood vessels. These are in no particular order. So we are going to take these components into details and explain them. Let's start with blood. What is blood? Now, blood refers to the fluid substance that circulates in the arteries and veins of our bodies. It transports oxygen and nutrients to the cells and carries away carbon dioxide and other waste products. Blood is red in color because it contains a red pigment called hemoglobin. Now this hemoglobin is an ion containing oxygen transport protein found in red blood cells of almost all vertebrates. In humans and other higher animals, the color of blood is red. Now in invertebrates such as spiders, crabs, and arthropods, they have the color of their blood to be blue. Now this is due to the presence of a copper-based hemocyanin in their blood. Now this copper-based element helps these organisms to survive in extreme conditions and also to survive in icy cold waters. Good, let's move on to the composition of the human blood. Now, the human blood consists of one, a liquid part called the blood plasma, and two, a solid part called the blood cells or the couple cells. We are also going to take these parts into details. Let's start with the liquid part, which is the blood plasma. The blood plasma is a yellowish liquid component of blood that holds the blood cells in whole blood in suspension. It contains mostly water and dissolved substances. Now these substances move from one part of the cell to the other. These dissolved substances include blood proteins such as serum, albumins, fibrinogens, 
etc. We also have dissolved foods such as glucose, amino acid, etc. Mineral salts are also present such as sodium ions, calcium ions, magnesium ions, among others. Hormones such as insulin, estrogen, progesterone are also present. Oxygen, gas, and carbon dioxide are also available. Waste substances such as urea are also present. Now let's look at the solid part of the human blood. Now there are three main types of blood cells. These are one, the red blood cells, also commonly known as the RBCs or the erythrocytes. We also have two, the white blood cells, commonly known as the WBCs and also known as the leukocytes. And finally, three, we have the platelets, also known as the thrombocytes. We are also going to look at these blood types and explain them into details, talking about their compositions. Let's start with the red blood cells. Now, the features of the red blood cells are they are round decks and concave on two sides, meaning they are biconcave in terms of their shape. They are very small in size and numerous in the body cells. The red blood cells lack a cell nucleus and they also lack most of the cell organelles. However, they have a cell membrane presence which is permeable to gases such as oxygen. The red blood cells contain hemoglobin which carries oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body. Let's look at the main function of the red blood cells. They mainly transport oxygen from the lungs to the cells and carbon dioxide from the cells to the lungs. So meaning they transport oxygen to the lungs to enable us to inhale and they remove carbon dioxide to enable us exhale. Let's move on to the white blood cell, which are the WBCs. Now let's look at their features. They are larger than red blood cells, but smaller in number. They have a nucleus, but they lack hemoglobin. There are two main types of white blood cells. These are phagocytes and lymphocytes. The phagocyte function is to surround and ingest any bacteria that may enter the body, meaning they eat up and destroy any foreign agent that enters the body. The function of the lymphocytes is that they produce antibodies, which are chemicals that fight against diseases. White blood cells are also produced in the red bone marrow and also in the lymph nodes. The function of the white blood cells is that they protect the body against diseases. Finally, let's look at the platelets. The platelets are minute, meaning they are tiny fragments of cells. The platelets do not have a nucleus. They also circulate inactivated in the blood, meaning they only become activated when they are exposed to air after a cut on the body. They also produce 
They are also produced in the red bone marrow. Let's look at the main function of the platelets. Now the platelets help in blood clotting. Now blood clotting, now how is blood clotting formed? Now let's look at it now. Whenever there's a cut on the skin, blood oozes out. Platelets on exposure to air become activated and form a clump, adhering to each other at the site of the cut. They secrete chemicals that convert a blood protein called fibrinogen to fibrin. The fibrin forms a mesh of fibers at the cut or damaged site. A clot then forms when platelets together with red and white blood cells become trapped in the fibers. Blood clotting begins within seconds of injury. Let's look at the importance of this blood clotting. One, blood clotting prevents excessive bleeding. So it ensures that you do not lose so much blood when you have a cut on your skin. Now it also prevents the entry of microorganisms into the body. This is because they produce antibodies which helps in fighting against diseases. Now, let's look at the main differences between red and white blood cells. Red blood cells are biconcave in shape, while white blood cells are irregular in shape. Red blood cells are small in size, while white blood cells are large in size. Red blood cells lack a nucleus, while white blood cells have a nucleus. Red blood cells have hemoglobin, while White blood cells lack hemoglobin. Now we said hemoglobin refers to the red pigment that gives blood its red color. So this brings us to the end of today's lesson. We'll continue with circulatory system in humans in our next lesson. Thank you.